Alright, in this video, we're going to show you how to use the cloud on RAM for multi-cloud features of the Cisco SD-WAN solutions. So, as you can see here, we have the SD-WAN fabric connected from the branch to the headquarters or the data centers already. And we want to extend the SD-WAN fabric to the cloud infrastructures by using the multi-cloud uh, features of the Cisco SD-WAN. So what the multi-cloud features works is we want to have the SD-WAN controllers to automatically spin up two of the HS routers on the transit VPCs of the uh, Amazon Web Service and we want to create the uh, IPsec connections to the transit gateway from AWS. Not only that, we're gonna build the IP uh, routing protocols inside the AWS to exchange the route from the AWS infrastructures and the SD-WAN fabric that we have. The routing protocols here that we have established is the BGP connectivity. So we have built the BGP uh, routing protocol between our SD-WAN edge to the transit gateway. And uh, we want to attach the two of the host VPCs which hosts the uh, applications that you are running on. Uh, we have two of the host VPCs connected to the transit gateway. And no worries, uh, everything will be automatically uh, established and created by the Cisco SD-WAN controllers. Let's take a look how it works. Now we are at the Cisco SD-WAN vManage controllers and right now we have four vManages connectivities connected to each other. When we want to spin up two of the CSR1000V routers on the AWS infrastructures. Then firstly we need to create a template and the template here we call it the Cloud Gateway Multi-Cloud Infrastructures. Then uh, we need to go to the VPN0, which is the WAN interface at this moment. And we put gigabit 0 slash 2 over there. And on the out band interface, uh, we have the gigabit 1 as the out band interface of the routers. And that is it that we need to prepare. Then we uh, attach two of the CSR1000B routers onto the template and then we put in information such as the system IP, site ID, and host names. Before we actually configure the device, we need to check the overall configuration first. And after we have checked already, then we click on configure device. The vManage controllers will create the configuration files and trying to push to the CSR1000B. But however, these two devices are not online yet because we haven't spin it up, then the status is done scheduled. Then we go to the cloud on RAM for multi-cloud. We, firstly, we need to add the AWS account or credentials there. In this example, we already added already. Uh, we put the key in as the login name for the AWS. And once the account has been created, then uh, we go to the global configurations for the transit cloud gateway. Then uh, we can, uh, this is a global configuration, so we can select the, what is the software image that we want to run, instance size, and IP address on the transit VPCs that we're gonna spin up. And even we can have the BGP autonomous system number uh, here because we need to establish the BGP connectivity to the transit gateway of the AWS. Let's move on to the host VPCs. Uh, in the in the diagram just now that I just show, uh, I'm gonna create. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a two attachment of the host VPCs. Then I just select the host VPCs that I want to attach to the transit gateway and add the tag name onto it. In this case, it is going to be ASEAN SASE demo. 
then click add and then the controller will push the tag to the um, the VPCs that we already have and then uh, then we go to create the cloud gateway then we just put the name in we just put the account of AWS we select the region and also we specify the two of the devices that we want to we want to provision uh, we can also change the size or change the software image over here with the customized option on the settings but if you want to leave it as default it's going to be the global configurations that we already created and two of the CSR routers will be spin up in the transit VPCs and create the IPsec connections through the transit gateway of AWS. Not only that, we gonna create the BGP routing protocols there to learn the routing together. At this time, the cloud gateway is spin up, the, the transit gateway is being spin up on the uh, the AWS portal, as you can see on the screen, it is pending. In, in a few moments, it's gonna be turns to green available right so now the transit gateway of AWS is already created without having to touch anything on the portal then it says that the controller right now is trying to create the transit VPCs here on the AWS so this is where uh, we want to locate the two of the CSR routers uh, here with the subnet of 10.200 something something slash 24 and once the VPC is being is successfully created then we're gonna create spin up the two of the CSR routers then we go check to the EC2 dashboard then we go to the instance we can see that uh, two of the CSR routers are being spin up And the instance type availability zone, it is according to what we have configured initially. So at this time, it is created. Uh, there are two of the CSR are created. And we just checked it is everything is running fine. All right, then let's go back to the vManage and see. Now we can see that. Uh, there are total six of the VHS or the WAN edge are up and you can see that we have AWS Cloud Gateway already established. On the Cloud Gateway portal here on the vManage, we can now attach the VPCs that we created. Let me put, let's put the tag in. We attach this one, ASEAN SASE demo, to the VPN one of the Cisco SD-WAN fabric. Uh, this VPC is with the tag ASEAN SASE demo. It's going to be attached to the newly created uh, transit gateway and mapped to the SD-WAN fabric after that. So it, this one is being mapped and it takes a few moments to finish. So you can see here that it is the two VPCs with the resource ID of this is are being attached to the transit gateway. That is good. All right. So it takes a few moments to finish. So let's check again on the multi-cloud portal. As you can see here, we have one VPN attached to the transit gateway, and we have one tag. Two of the host VPCs are being attached to the SD-WAN fabric. And 
I expect that there's gonna be some tunnels, IPsec, normal IPsec tunnels between uh, SD WAN routers, and the transit gateway will be up in a few seconds. You can see it is pending, so it is being created on the portal of the AWS. This one is automatic, by the way, so we don't need to know what is going on there or how configure how to configure the the AWS is just automatically created all right we can see at least something changes we have uh, IPsec which is primary and one IPsec is a secondary that one comes from the first router in total, we expect that it's going to be four because we have two routers established. So at this time, we have four unreachable tunnels. And in a few minutes, then we can get the four reachable tunnels already. As I said, it has primary and secondary. So each of the routers, we create two of the tunnels interface there. At this time, we go to the Cloud Gateway 1 and 2. We can see the BFD number goes up to 4, which is the actually the SD-WAN tunnels. When we drill down to the dashboard of the device, we can see that the tunnel has been established successfully from the DC and from the branch to the Cloud Gateway number 1. That is good. Then we go to the real time, we go to BGP, uh, we just want to see the BGP neighbor, whether or not it established to the transit gateway. And we can see that it is already established. And there are two BGP neighbor uh, set up at this time. We check on the routing as well. We expect that we we learn the routing from the host VPCs that we attach to the transit gateway and talk to the BGP connectivity and we need to learn it uh, to the BGP which is 172.31.0.0 and 172.16.201.0/24 this is the subnet of the host VPCs let's check on the AWS portal so we have two VPCs here that we tagged it uh, with the uh, ASEAN SASE demo and this is the subnet that uh, we learned through the transit gateway from AWS through the BGP. Uh, that is good. That proof actually that the connectivity works fine and uh, yep. So we just go to the branch at this time and we also see this subnet has been learned through the SD-WAN fabric to the branch, uh, uh, branch devices. And the next hop is the cloud gateway that we just spin up just now. This concludes our demo because uh, everything has successfully completed and uh, we don't need to touch on the AWS account at all. We just work through the vManage to get everything spin up successfully. Thank you for watching.